So get this. So Israel was the uh, in in bed the most with Pfizer, right? And they had a deal. So how, how has tiny Israel beat out bigger countries on COVID nineteen vaccinations, securing a steady stream of vials and inoculating a larger share of its citizenry than any other? How? Well, Israel paid a premium. It locked in an early supply of Pfizer BioNTech vaccines and struck a unique deal. They'd get vaccines if Israel gave Pfizer the data on their citizens. Oh. Here it is. The nation of some 9 million promised Pfizer a swift vaccine rollout, along with data from Israel's centralized trove of medical statistics, to study whether herd immunity is achieved after reaching a certain percentage of vaccination coverage in Israel. That's according to their agreement. We said to Pfizer that the moment they give us the vaccine, we'll be able to vaccinate at the speed they've never heard of, said their health minister. Israel's small size and technologically advanced public health system offer an attractive model for Pfizer to demonstrate the impact of the vaccine on an entire population. What? Pfizer has not signed a similar agreement with any other country. Company spokesperson Jared Pitt said, this is from January 31st, 2021. This is right as they were rolling it out. So the data that they're giving them is they roll out the vaccine, people take it, and then they give Pfizer all the data of yeah. that? So that just sounds like a medical experiment. Uh, it sounds like it. Israel's, uh, okay, uh, the vaccine for data trade-off has sparked impassioned debate in Israel among data privacy experts. Biotech researchers and the country's own medical ethics board weighing the potential benefits of mining the population for vaccine insights against the potential abuse of millions of personal medical records. We need to understand that Israel's agreement with Pfizer is going to be one of the, I would say, widest medical experiments on humans in the 21st century. Wow. It is that. Wow. They're just saying it, Kurt. Who said that? Israel's Democracy Institute, Tehillah Swartz Ausler, a data privacy advocate and a leading voice questioning the Pfizer data deal. So that's not anybody in Pfizer saying that. That's a critic. So that's why that would make sense. Some Israeli commentators have accused Swartz Ausler of seeking to spoil a successful national campaign that the government has branded that with the hashtag vaccination. She and many other Israeli experts tend to concur that quick access to the vaccine is Israel's most important priority. Boy, wait till they find. I wonder how they felt when they found out that Pfizer never even tested to see if it stopped transmission or contract. I wonder what. It sounds like they tested it out on a bunch of Jewish people, it sounded, which sounds a little familiar. So, <laughs> most Israelis are celebrating their record setting vaccination drive. This is from 2021, this article from the January. But right when they started to roll out the vaccines. Uh, okay. The vaccination drive is central to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's re-election <laughs> campaign. The first, the first Israeli to receive a shot, Netanyahu mounted his syringe in a glass box. The needle angled upward like a rocket ship with a plaque riffing off the words of U.S. astronaut Neil Armstrong. One small shot for man, one giant step for everyone's health. Nearly every Israeli citizen and resident belongs to one of four public HMOs, a healthcare system rooted in the National Trade Union of Israel's early years. Every Israeli's full medical history, from physician visits to hospitalizations, is accessible to any health provider at the click of a mouse, a repository of digital records going back 30 years. It's a gold mine says Ziv Ofek, who helped launch Israel's public health database, which he asserts is unparalleled by any other country. Israel's medical data experts want to know exactly what Israel is giving Pfizer and whether that data being studied amounts to a clinical trial without the express consent of the millions of Israelis rushing to get vaccinated. Uh -huh. In interviews, Israeli officials insist they are only giving Pfizer anonymous statistics already provided to the public, such as the number of weekly cases and hospitalizations. You can't trust anything they say, though. 
But the contract says Israel will give Pfizer unspecified subgroup analysis and vaccine effectiveness analysis as agreed by the parties, leaving open the possibility that more personalized categories of data could be delivered. Can you have real research based on statistical numbers? This is not research, OFEC says. Israeli health officials claim they don't give patient-level data, only statistics. There's a big question whether it's the whole truth, part of the truth, or no truth at all. Privacy and medical data experts say buckets of data scrubbed of patients' personal details can still be traced back to identify people if the sample is small enough, revealing sensitive medical details, such as who is HIV positive. If Israel transfers such private data to Pfizer, there are concerns it could get hacked and disseminated by third parties. Your insurance company will know all your medical history. Your employer will know it. The political campaigner who would like to convince you to vote for someone would know everything about your medical history, not to say about people who would like to marry your children. Warren Swartz asked her describing what she calls a small concern. The contract also allows Pfizer or Israel to provide input, make factual corrections, and delay publication of their studies of the vaccine's effectiveness, which some Israeli medical data and privacy experts say could allow either party, each with vested commercial and political interests in the vaccine's success, to hide or delay publication failures. Okay. <laughs> a, a Pfizer spokesman did not respond to NPR's <clears throat> query on this matter. So test it out on our <laughs> citizens. We'll give you the data from those tests. You don't have to share it with the citizens. You don't have to share it. Wow. In fact, you can suppress it. I guess they'll find out how it works out for them individually. I think they, they are. Yeah. Some Israelis getting shots at the arena say they are not worried about their data. If it can help the world to get out of it, I don't care. It turns out it doesn't help the world. I don't think it's a big secret, my personal data. What's data again? He went on to say. <laughs> what is data? Uh, what is data? So that's an article from January 2021. I would like to see a follow up on this. See how the Israelis feel about all this. Well, they're aren't they rioting against Netanyahu right now? They are rioting against Netanyahu right now. Yeah, I mean, I guess his his big rollout. I, I'm guessing a lot of stuff he had in his hands and isn't real popular at the moment. Is there any sh there? Is, there is no shadier group of people than big pharma there is everything they do is has layers and layers of shadiness to it that's medical exper experiment the whole reason that we have to have in israel that we protect at all costs is so shit like this can never happen, happen again. to them <laughs> isn't that something <laughs> they made a whole <laughs> a whole wall of gaza something. walled off to protect them and then they set up a medical experimentation on them as a country what's the big deal my data what's the big deal Go to jimmydore.com to see my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny. For only $10, you get to become a premium member, too. And come see us do our live shows. We're going to be doing stand-up comedy in Milwaukee, Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, New York, Coho's, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Maryland, and more. Go to jimmydore.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.